Hello there my friends and welcome back to another episode of Draw With Mikey, episode 47. Now today's episode is going to be one of those, you know, really chilled laid back ones because I've come back from holiday, thus why there was no episode last week. Hi everybody, it's good to be back. Um, but that jet lag has motherfucked me, it's really messed me up. Like, my sleeping pattern is not quite so good, so I'm forcing myself to stay just a little bit further awake and then I'm definitely going to get a lovely night's rest because I went to America to visit, you know, LA and Vegas and do the stuff and ting. It was lovely. I hope you guys are all doing well. This is, of course, that chilled out whatever kind of series where I'll draw whatever I want to in the sketchbook. You guys can get on with whatever you guys are getting on with and we'll all get something done together. All questions and comments welcome. I will do my best to read through as many as possible but there are like 136 comments from the last video. Uh, it looks like you guys are all eager for anatomy and form study proper tutorials so that's going to be further down the line after we get some guy tutorials out of the way. We're finally here. There's going to be some uh, guys going on with the anime I forgot what I was saying. Some guys going on with the anime tutorials a little bit further down the line. With any luck this weekend, as long as I can just get my sleeping pattern sorted. Enough faff and babble. What's going on in El Comentos? Dark Jet Production says, Did you notice that great anime artists have names that start with M? Mike and L, Mark Crilly, Mikey Mega Mega? Oh, thank you very much, sir. Nine likes. <laughs> I like that. Um, what's that all about? I have no idea. There's like guys like, is it Keenan Lafferty? And then there's a Learn to Draw channel and there's Rake. There's no, there's loads of like, you know, non-M based powerhouses out there. But, you know, deep down we know M is where the magic's at. Goddy Blow Art says, can I do a tutorial on clothing because you're really weak at it? Yes, that is on the list after we get through some guy stuff. And, oh yeah, my overall question from the last episode was essentially... Uh, for you guys, if you had to only kind of live with one for the rest of your life, would you go for either manga or the anime adaptations? If that was the only way you could ever kind of dive into the whole world of Japanese medium. Uh, so Nico Sika says, I definitely only read manga. I don't know why, but the feeling is totally different. Really can't pinpoint what it is that I prefer about it. But yeah, manga definitely. I've got to be honest, me as well. I would most certainly stick with the manga over anime because it's not going to go on a rant because <laughs> we got so angry about this episodes and episodes and episodes ago but uh anime filler episodes i do not like them they don't make me a happy guy and manga makes me super happy as well um junior or jr his favorite cartoon shows that were made in the rest included samurai jack boondocks regular show the old teen titans steven universe tom and jerry invader zim and voltron i recognize two or three of those so Wow, I've missed out on even Western comics. That's strange. Have I read a lot of Tintin as a kid? I was one of those generation ones. Oh, Hergé. Um, and if you guys are ever, if you guys, if you guys are ever curious, that's not the right word. But if you guys are ever like, um, or were ever fans of Tintin, or maybe like an older gen, and you just know what I'm talking about, because maybe a younger lot don't these days. God, what a strange world. Um, but I used to do karate with this guy called Garen Ewing. And he is an artist who's written uh, the Rainbow Orchid uh, series. They're like a Tintin style books that he's done. Go and Google the Rainbow Orchid. Leave this tab open, please. Listen to my dulcet tones. Um, but yeah, like what he's achieved is incredible. I really look up to that guy. Uh, so I'm going to have to do a bit of comment skipping as we make our way down, just so that this episode isn't super cho long. Uh, so. Let me just say that I do have a quick flick and read through all of them on here, uh, even if I don't read them all. I really feel like, um, this really feels like some super late night radio, because I'm just, <laughs> I'm so mellowed out and so so tired. Oh, but I do have, wait a minute, here we go. Wait a minute, can I get a better ring? There we go. That's my mug of one third full coffee. And today's sound effect noise that I was ringing off of is a bullet casing that I took back from holiday. Um, that's fine to take through airports, it's just uh, real bullets that you can't, because we did some gun shooting in Las Vegas, my first ever time uh, <laughs> with a machine gun. It was awesome, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, murder's not so great, but oh man, there was quite fun shooting that gun. Uh, so, Stephen Cabrera says, Hey Mikey, you seem to pronounce stroke read different languages very well. Thank you very much, sir. I was wondering how many languages do you know stroke speak? Oh my goodness, I know no languages. I can barely get through the English language, which I mumble and people from different parts of England don't understand me there and they think I'm um, Kiwi or something. Uh, but I 
like do you know a tiny bit of like Portonghua or Huishua EDR Portonghua Koshu or Shoda Buhao um and like a tiny bit of uh, Spanish like only enough to offend Spanish people uh je parle très bien le français uh, bien sûr um and uh what else oh <laughs> oh yeah of course oh so shite nihongo jōzu desu ne what watashi wa uh watashi ga nihongo dōtomo daisuki uh daga uh ima Mm, uh, so yeah, Japanese as well. There's always there's always like a little bit if I like to go on a cheeky holiday or like take a city break, I try to learn some emergency language in that country, just basic directions and how to order a beer, just because uh, it goes a long way if you make the slightest effort. Like uh, I went to Prague a fair while ago with a friend of mine. What what Czech do I still remember? Uh Przepraszam, mluvite dobrze angielski. I think that's it. And uh, good day, Stanisza Metra. <laughs> uh, that's about it. <laughs> so you speak in English, and where is the metro? Um, so yeah, I think I don't know. I like I I butcher languages, uh, but I really really love languages. And I, whenever I hear people speaking another language, I get super jealous, and I really want to learn it. Um, and then it's just a case of finding the time, and then it's really easy to forget. Uh, but yeah, if you ever get the opportunity, I couldn't recommend it more to anyone. Learn another language. It's a really big deal. And I remember at school being forced to go to, I'm going on a rant. This is exactly what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to get into story time because I really want to smash your comments. Um, so I'll make this quick. But like, I remember going to school and being forced to learn French and German. And I bloody hated it. And then uh, there was some girl that I fancied in the French class that so was quite a bit below me. So I pretended to be really bad at French until I dropped down into her set. I was <laughs> a fucking idiot. Um, so, yeah, like, learn it. Seriously, if somebody's going to offer you a language for free or you know someone who can speak two languages, I'm not kidding. Fucking learn that shit. Get that all inside of you. It will do you wonders when you grow up. Uh, unless you're already old, in which case, too late, mate. Give up. Sean O'San Manga Art and Stuff says, Can I just say that four Ragnarok trailer is yas? <laughs> oh, that yas. No one likes a yas, mate. But yes. <laughs> that fucking thing looks so good oh and like obviously i haven't even watched i'm sure there's a because uh, i watched oliver harper's uh retrospective channel and stuff like that. he's another english guy who does like film commentary and stuff like that he's one of the people who gave me inspiration to do film gram and he uh i think he does a lot of trailer discussions and breakdowns i've not watched his yet or anybody's about that trailer because i'm a bit behind of the time and i was on holiday and i'm super tired uh but it looks so fucking good and then like uh because oh that was it so obviously everybody was like they've got to do the um the hulk uh you know when he's like the gladiator king of the combat planet they had to fit that storyline in and everybody was like put it in guardians of the galaxy 2 and it wasn't in guardians of the galaxy 2 so everyone's like oh it's not happening they're skipping the whole hulk thing but the fact that they've worked a version of that narrative by the looks of things into for uh ragnarok i am super pleased by that's so fucking cool because hulk's born in the wrong you know millennium he's a gladiator king that should have people thrown to him. Ah, so that's very, very good. Um, Miller0314 says, Which version of the Hunter x Hunter anime do you prefer? The 1999 version or the 2011? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm really sorry, guys. I'm not going to be able to <laughs> read many of your comments. I'm going to go on story time every time I see something that gets my juices going. So, for me personally, no one asked. You just want um, an A or B answer, Miller. You're not going to get one. You're going to get a story. So, like, when I was uh, younger, one of the first times I was exposed to anime was um, my, like, I knew a guy who, like, knew the internet really, really well. He went off to LA and disappeared. We think he's dead in a ditch somewhere. So, like, he, uh, he like, just had downloaded somehow or, like, first ever streaming torrents. But that shit was, like, fucking new and the internet was a mystery world for the pedophiles immediately. But he downloaded um, like a trailer for um, The Violin of Hamelin, like a really old anime. And uh, he had on this CD the first five episodes of the 1999 Hunter x Hunter. And then I separately, Lucky Dip, on like torrent websites, downloaded something random like episode seven of Naruto. And that week was like an explosion of media I had never seen in my life. Um, I had um, obviously... I think been aware of like the odd animation film or something like that, but um, that was maybe late night TV. This is long before we were renting videos and stuff like that. And my God, I just, I had no idea what I was looking at. Like I, 
I realized immediately that it was a bit of a slow burn. Even a 1999 version, it has that very pastel feel. And um, what's that song in the original? It's like, da na 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 do 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 da 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 na 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 Sorry. <laughs> you didn't need me to sing that, but you know what I mean? It like it was just a really invoked. So I started watching that and I was like, fuck, this is anime. They're speaking Japanese with subtitles. It was so fresh and new and immediately I was because this is the time that like I was really into Final Fantasy seven. So it must have been around 97, 98, 99 going into that kind of period of time. And I just all I knew is that I wanted to speak Japanese and watch anime and play Japanese video games and go to Japan like proper like the early version of Weibo long before such terms ever existed. Um, but then I grew up a bit and matured, but like I was just like, what is this? I want more of this in my life immediately. So the original will always have a place in my heart, which is my long, long, long way of saying I really prefer the 2011 version every single other time. Because the 2011 version um, did the things correctly. It sticks to uh, the manga. It doesn't have the filler episodes that the earlier series does. It's a brighter pastel tone, whereas the first episodes are really dark in nature and hard to see. The animation really weirdly, although not perfectly consistent, is really, really, really good for a long-running, ongoing series. They don't cut many corners at all. Um, and the original anime would have fights, which are in a manga, which they cut out. What the... Why would you do that? When you've got... You've got like a... Oh my god, I'm getting angry. <laughs> oh my god. So, you have an anime series in the 1999 version. They included filler episodes with, like, tasks that never happened in a hunter exam. Like, they had to... um jumpstart an old shipwreck or something like that and it increases the relationship between Hisoka and Gon. So they make up shit to put in there uh, but then they cut out stuff that's in the manga like the actual fight between Hisoka and the guy who can make a clone of himself in the Celestial Tower. Why the fuck would you, why would you dump material and make up, fuck. So anyway, 2011 version Miller 0314, 2011 version every time. Uh, it's so good. It's so good. And my God, it just, it's such a slow burn and the stakes increase. And one minute you're just watching these young kids do the hunter exam and the next you're watching them sort of do like Godspeed and they're fighting for chimera ants and everything's important and everything has risk and weight. And with every skill comes a price that you pay and all Nen techniques are double-edged blades that affect the user as much. It's balanced, man. It's so good. Such a fucking good anime. Such a fucking good manga. Excuse the swearing. By the way, I usually say this in the beginning, I forgot. So this is like a, a heavily spoiler alerty, sweary podcast thing that we do. Is it a podcast? It's like a draw cast, basically, because obviously um, I'm drawing. And yeah, what am I drawing? So I've just, I filled in a sketchbook last night and I was like, right, I really need to get around to doing things that people keep asking more vis-a-vis -vis Claymore or something like that or near automata. Um, but I'm uh, just so tired. And I was like, right, I can't even bend my mind to that. I'm just going to sketch out some... Uh, weird prototype stuff for codename 1984 that other thing that i'm working on so i've just got a few more bits on paper there and a few ideas um basically focusing around like the mega mega character um and how he's got like a robot arm but it doesn't turn into a laser gun i want it robot arm that turns into a um, glowing ball and chain like a mace um and i want it to be like if any of you guys watched uh the transformers cartoon the original one within like the first three episodes i think there's a fight between megatron and optimus prime an Optimus Prime's hand just turns into a glowing orange axe. And Megatron's hand just like slides into his wrist and out slides just a glowing purple ball and chain. It's a fucking most badass thing you could imagine for fighting robots. You think they'd have like laser beams and shit, but he has a fucking mace. I loved it. Oh, I fucking loved it when I saw that. So yeah, I'm just playing around with drawing designs on that front. The loss of a, the loss of a hand, the robot hand replacement as a theme. Maybe sketch out like a uh, sort of rockets and stuff. I've not quite got the look down of a style. It keeps slightly changing, so I do need to nail down um, some reference sheets for that and get cracker lacking because uh, this is probably going to be sorted out. Um, don't ask me in what format. It's probably just going to be a comic format, which I will have a few color panels and upload to YouTube um, and work through. I might go for a fan driven narrative once it takes off, if it takes off, and then later down the line. This is like Mikey's five-year plan or some bullshit like this. Later down the line, once you've got so many tutorials out of the way, I'll do like a how-to-draw book, um, which hopefully will help me eat food and then um, crack on with the manga, something 
maybe along those lines. Well, I've got no idea. <laughs> I've got no idea if the audio is even picking up. Like I'm proper mumbling to myself. So anybody who's watching along right now, thank you very much. Bloody love you. So sorry that you've got so many comments. Um, oh, in fact, Shah Shahari Adipto uh, seems to say uh, a lot of things like silver seventy-seven cyan and so on. A lot of you guys basically saying that anatomy is complex and you want some realistic figure anatomy tutorials because you'd find it very very helpful yes yes you would and yes we will this is all on the um list to do we're going to get into guys then we're getting to get it can sort of do more particular things framing scenes powers armor and so on interacting characters and yeah we're going to just like up the stage out of the manga and anime maybe into sort of art tutorials various things and very particular examples so much this is the thing with drawing right there is always something else to draw. We we live in a world with so much stuff, um, so many things, so many lifestyles and cultures and bits, and your imagination comes up with all combinations of that and adaptations of the world around you as well. You, like, you can run out of, uh, oh God, what's the word? You can run out of juice and flow and you can sort of lose inspiration, but in the end of the day, like there is just a billion infinite things that you can just actually draw. It's so good. Bloody love art. Sometimes I'm in a sketchbook like this episode, um, the juices aren't flowing and I'm shattered and what I draw isn't particularly good. But that's what a sketchbook's for, man. Like, fill it up. It doesn't have to be masterpieces. Get your ideas down. Sketch it. Move on. Uh, the Science of Gaming. Love your channel. Amazing. Thank you very much to Science of Gaming. That's very, very kind. Um, a lot of you saying very kind things. And Zoid Industries. Anime forever rather than manga. Hashtag hardcore crew. Love you, hardcore crewers. You know this. Uh, some of you guys are developing your own art styles and focusing on manga like Daisuke Uchiha, lovely and Ron is going to go for manga, obviously this is about a manga over anime or which would you prefer Ron will go for manga just so you can see the end of Berserk and Jojo, I'd miss the voices that change the way you perceive a character and the music from the 1997 Berserk adaptation oh my god was that like Kentaro Mura did um, the Berserk music that was some fucking intense different shit that was wild it had like that weird dark industrial techno messed up alternative universe god hand behelet shit so good so good yeah i know exactly what you mean i played um in fact i used to have once a dreamcast with uh a berserk game on that where you just ran around slashing the shit out of stuff and that had some a couple of really like fucked up uh, Kentaro Mura songs as well. I think very good times. Um, Divas Ready says, "Where's the Final Fantasy 15 gameplay?" Um, yeah, dude, I completely had to stop that. Why did I have to stop it? Um, uh, well, because firstly, I wanted to go for a test run where um, I actually stopped doing video games on the channel. Spoiler alert: they're going to come back when I start streaming or something like that, or just you know get more time in my life. Because turns out I really liked playing those video games, so they will come back. Um, but they were just taking so much time, so I had to stop to take up some other hobbies and do some other things. Although I really love that, and I'm just running around, like, riding them chocobos and collecting shit. So, yeah, maybe we'll come back. If I can get some streaming going, we might one day, like, oh god, I don't know, like, do a Final Fantasy mega set where I just spend a year streaming from Final Fantasy V up to, like, all the ones, not the online ones, because they would take a billion years, but, like, smash out loads of Final Fantasy titles. It would probably be more for me than you, going down memory lane. Um, what else have we got? Uh, oh, every, all the comments in a weird order, because I'm on uh, top comments first and so on. Uh, Creed McTurvy, you're the best, Mikey. Awesome tutorial, man. Greetings of Columbia. Oh, hola. Greetings, my Colombian friends. All over the world, people. Always welcome. Um, Paradise of Darkness. I enjoy Jack Ham books of American drawing like cartoon and semi-realism. I love those 50 style looks so much. Yes, uh, that is one hell of a style. You are correct, sir. And Alex Berrios or Berrios, uh, says, I got started with Dragon Ball Z, then Naruto, and from there, full unrated anime in Japan, and then later got into etchy anime like everyday living with monster girls. Oh, man. <laughs> what a fall from grace. You started so well. Um, also, the big O series was great. Yes, it was. It was so stylized, but I went on about that in the last episode. I won't go on again. Um... <laughs> Art Pitt says you can actually buy hentai at your local Walmart, Walmart these days. Jesus Christ. To be fair, in Japan, like uh, um, all like the 7 Eleven shops or their versions, all the little um, Japanese stores where you get most of your bits, like in their comic section, they would have loads of hentai. Like even in a small shop, it would have like a whole rack which would have different like of the main hentai things. 
And then over in the corner, like shoved right in the side, was like a really niche section for the real freaks out there, which was just porn mags with actual women in it because the hentai was way more popular than real people, which is <laughs> slightly concerning for a culture. Um, but yeah, I remember just like getting an eye for walking around and just being like, wow, damn, that stuff's just really out there. It's not like, you know, back of a shop. It's just like, yep, here's the normal comics. And then here's a hentai one with a bit of string around them so you don't open them up and, you know, jack off in a store. God knows what somebody might do. And then over there, if you're a real freak, you know, ugh, keep it to yourself. Uh, pictures of real people. So, yeah, swings and roundabouts. Uh, Louis Apada says, hey, Mikey, what's your favorite anime song? Mine is DBZ Fusion Reborn music. Also, some of the early Bleach stuff. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, you too. What's my favorite song? Da na 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 do 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 Na, 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 na. Um, and what was Naruto back? So the reason why I say in particular episode episode seven of Naruto, imagine like oh, I don't know if you can these days. Like just culturally, you get so much information in front of you. But basically, imagine you have never seen an anime before. You know borderline nothing about ninjas except traditional information. You know they're masters of darkness in disguise and they're very serious. And then out of nowhere comes this bright version of ninjas where they're colourful characters. and They've got special powers that hadn't even occurred to you. So episode 7 I think was like um, in the... Oh what's his name? Is it like Zadamaki? So he's one of the guys with... No I think that's a bleach character. So he's one of the guys with like one of the massive swords. Um like one of the seven great swordsmen Shichini no Gata Shinobi or something like Shinobi, Shichini no Shinobi Gata something like this from the water village and he's got like that other guy who works with him this little kid who looks like a bit of a girl who's pretending to be like one of the police guys oh man I forgot everything anyway so it's just like the scene where Kakashi's already been uh, caught into this uh, water trap technique and it's Sasuke and Naruto and they're fighting this guy and Naruto does his like Kagebushi no Jutsu and he jumps in and he um, like, turns him, yeah, Henge, Henge no Jutsu, he turns himself into a giant Fuma Shuriken and then throws it to Sasuke, and Sasuke throws it, and the guy jumps it, and then it turns into Naruto while he's behind on the blind side, and he throws the Shuriken, and it, the guy dodges it, but that wasn't a point. The whole point was to release a water prison on Kakashi, which happens, and Kakashi's out, and he does his like monkey uh, copy technique, and then, yeah, I was just like, what? I was just like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck am I watching? This is amazing. Um, and back then, the music's like, I don't worry, I won't give you the full song. It was like, da na, da na na na, do 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 do, let's go, do 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 do, da na na da, oh e wa o yu no ni, i so i de i do, something like that. Ooh, <laughs> na 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 na, oh my god, it's all come flooding back. I won't spend the next three minutes um, reminiscing, but yeah, um, so those are the ones I really remember. Are they my favourite? Unfortunately, I can't answer that question anymore, Louis Power, because I can only hear two songs in my head, Naruto and Hunter Hunter. You know what's weird? I don't... Other than, like, so in the 2011 version of Hunter Hunter, I only really remember the fanfare song that's like... Anyway. So I don't remember what their actual theme tunes were. I just remember that kind of marching fanfare strolling along theme. Uh, oh, God. Uh, how many times are going to apologise for going on rants in this episode? This is, this is just how it is when Mikey's super tired. Nordic Shadow. Hello, Mikey. Hello, Nordic Shadow. I would rather read manga than watching anime. Good. Just because of the feeling I get when I read it. Yeah. You read it at your own pace. So this is the thing, right? When you read manga, you take it in at the pace that you want, you absorb it scene by scene, you read into what's going on, and it's a medium where time exists at your rate. If you want to read manga really quickly and you're sucked into it, you read it quick. If you want to really mull over it and read it slow, you read it slow. The story might be set where a series of events happen over minutes, or a story might take weeks from the beginning of a chapter to the end, a load of things happen, but you're going to absorb it however that works for you. When it comes to anime, you have to have the energy as a viewer to absorb that at the pace that the anime is playing. It gives you that information real time, solidly, bang, 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 over the course of 20 odd minutes. So there's only one way that you can kind of receive that version of a story. So that's another thing I really love about reading anything as opposed to TV stuff, although I do like a good lot of TV. Um, you got into anime by watching Inuyasha? Yeah, so in the last episode, loads of you guys were like 
kind of gave me a feel of your different generations of like how old you might be like obviously the magic of the internet you guys can be from anywhere around the world you could be male female something in between somebody who hates being labeled somebody who loves being labeled i don't fucking care um but like you know you've all got these different introductions you had to like manga and anime in particular it's so cool because some of you are like dragon ball generation some of you got into dragon ball z some of you are like new schoolers getting into loads of new stuff and some of you know like the gems like inuyasha and all that kind of thing and it's just awesome getting that feel for it so last episode i was my proper like reminisce much like right now like i loved you're suggesting some old stuff I, ha- I hadn't watched for ages and I bloody loved it. Um, what else is going on in the comments? Hell yeah, and you might make a mega vid. You know this, Crob, great one. Do, 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 do. Sexual bread ninja. I'd pick only watching anime because I don't really like reading manga. Get out. There could be some scenes that confuse me in a manga and then I feel like I'm missing something. Also, question. Do you, follow, do you follow any other artists on YouTube? I noticed you mentioned White Manga. Yeah, I did, because he's got some really good tutorials on making manga as well as other drawing tutorials. Um, and he's actually making and producing a manga, which is something I haven't done, which makes him fucking awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, dude, I do. But the problem is, actually, can I open a new tab? I was going to say, the problem is, if I scroll up to look at my uh, subscriptions, then I'll lose my place on here. I will make a video about like artists youtubers that i'm personally following in the future um but let's give you a really quick super quick rundown i'm not sure if all of these are artists i'm gonna guess we've got aces to aces uh agnes cecile ahmed aldori uh artcore uh, some of these channels i haven't watched for ages uh brush boost maybe that's an art channel cartoon block uh do do do, do china digital painting Ba 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 ba, Siarin, Cypherden, Demus Art. Um, okay, actually, there's loads. Yeah, in fact, I've got. How many channels am I subscribed to on here? <laughs> okay, no, sorry, I'm going on a tangent in my head. Welcome to um, Housework with Mikey, where we just clean up his channel by unsubscribing to stuff he hasn't watched for years. Doop do doop do doop do do. Hope you can imagine something exciting, you lovely guys at home, because I'm not going to explain any of this. Shuke Art, Sarah Fleur Art, Sakimi Chan. Ah, oh, of course, everyone knows Sakimi Chan. Ross Draws, obviously, like everyone knows about him. And obviously, there's the big ones. Mr. McCrilly and um, Jazzy McJazz House. You know those guys. They're, they're the big ones. So, yeah, loads, basically, loads. Check out other artists on YouTube all the time. Yeah, if you watch my tutorials, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoy them. Um, but it, it's all about finding your own art style. So watch mine, watch theirs. Get, like, a load of different techniques under your skin, and then you can kind of work out um, what happens for you. Like, don't be just like me. Be better. Be you. Oh, so let's get on a T-shirt printed one day on a mug. Don't be like me. Be better. Be you. Mikey. Darren Hill says, hey, Mikey. Hello, Darren. Firstly, I'm not going to pick between anime or manga. All right, mate. Great way to play along. That would be a nightmare. I'd have to choose between the two. Best Western cartoon to be like classics like Mickey Mouse and Looney Tunes. Eh, old school Mickey Mouse does have some classic vibe about it, so I, I can kind of agree with that. The original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would be up as... Oh, man. Oh, man. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then they had to change it, didn't they? Because Ninja was too much of a violent word. So it's Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, which is just a fucking sad state of affairs. Um, Western cartoons are focused on a children's audience. You are right, which is why you think many turn to anime and manga. Yeah, that's it. It's a cultural thing, isn't it? Like anime and manga is just another medium to express stories. Um, It does have a lot of its own particular uh, genres and overtones and tropes. Um, But yeah, it serves a way wider range of audience than cartoons in the west ever did you are absolutely correct um i love this new (laughs) i'm just kind of speed reading for your um big comment any basically you want more fundamental drawing stuff as well um yeah uh, iron out bad habits absolutely it's always good to go back to the basics you are correct and you're hoping to see a more manga approach to drawing a dragon in the future yeah i get quite a few dragon requests actually so yeah we'll get there we'll get there naru123 says sup mike hello naru always happy to watch your vids as i watch this one it looks like you're just casually filling up the page are there moments when you take a moment and actually think what you want to put on a page also even if this is just casual drawing i'm learning quite a lot by watching so thanks you're welcome thanks for watching along um oh yeah well it's like it's like the full range dude so 
some of these because it's it's just me using the sketchbook obviously i use the sketchbook a lot not always on camera um, but i try to make sure i do something every week for the sake of um, something for you guys to watch while this episode's going or just have floating on in the background and the sketchbook is a tool so use it for whatever maybe you need to get some ideas down maybe you've seen a shape that you want to curve and just work with and create something out of it maybe you're just desperate to put the pen to paper and chill out and just see what comes out or what fills the page Maybe you've seen another artist's work that's got your juices flowing and you want to work off of that or copy it or like create some designs based off of that. Maybe you need to get some templates down. Maybe you need to figure out character dimensions or maybe you need to practice your proportions and stuff. It really doesn't matter. Um, that particular sketchbook page, I was randomly filling it up. Um, but I was like in my other hand, I was holding that book I kept mentioning last episode, which um, has a bit of a, a breakdown of the structure that makes up like the chest and torso and uh, limbs in terms of the bones at least so I was I'm um, keeping an eye on that but giving it my own poses to try to make sure that I could apply that to different dimensions different angles of a character because um, copying out artists you like to work out what's good about their style and what works for you and what the nuances are and building up your technical skill is great um, but when it comes to figure drawing and your poses and so on copying out is fine but you need to actually learn the rules that it's trying to teach you about the human form so that you can um, end up with almost any pose and position and understand how to build that up as well but I do still recommend like life studies and stuff like that um, especially for the older people who are not going to freak out by the fact there might be somebody naked sitting in an art classroom somewhere um, it's a good thing to do 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 could you draw an old Italian from Soul Calibur or a scene of Yoshimitsu from Soul Calibur meeting a gender bent version of modern Yoshimitsu from Tekken says Denver Vandre that's a very particular request lucky for you um I fucking love Yoshimitsu. He was one of my favourite characters in Tekken. Especially rant time. <laughs> God. <laughs> Everything in this particular episode. Story time. Mikey, do you like A or do you like B? You can just say A or B. That answer is enough. Story time. So, in my day, Tekken 3 was the best fucking thing in the world. It was on the PlayStation 1. It was in the generations of Final Fantasy 7 and um, Metal Gear Solid. And the world was just a great place. And the best fighting game you could get was Tekken 3 because they introduced Harang, which is kind of tough. Um, and Eddie, is it Eddie Gordo, the um, uh, breakdancer? It's kind of a bit of a pain, or capoeira, I should say. Um, and Yoshimitsu, and I fucking loved Yoshimitsu because he was like a funky looking cyber ninja with a glowing blade. And I swear to God, like, I was Yoshimitsu. Like, I got so fucking good at Tekken 3. Me and my mate, my mate would often be. Um, uh, harangue and we just knew all their moves so you, you didn't think it was just a like a chess game fighting between us about what we were gonna do oh man i haven't played tekken in so long you know what i've got going off piste warning let's have a look so going back to some earlier comments about like um you know what happened to the video games and stuff it is gonna come back because uh as you'll know i got a ps3 um back when i started this channel really in fact that's how i started yeah um, because I just needed to stay in the house a lot more to look after my mum because she was um, poorly and she's now in a home. Um, so I had to pick up a hobby that involved me staying in a house a lot more. So I was like, right, I'll get back into video games since um, I'd stopped playing in the days of N64. And so I got a secondhand PS3 on a cheap, which is brilliant. And then I just started buying loads and loads of the best of the best PS3 games. And I've got off piece again. I've got like a massive fucking collection of PS3 games. And pretty much every single one of them is fucking awesome. And I've opened and played about like four or five of them. So I've also got Tekken Tag Tournament 2, which is supposed to be like one hell of a game. And so I haven't really played that. And I've got Soul Calibur 5 and all that stuff. Um, in fact, just to see those games out of my two game pile, I've had to pull out of a way Biohazard, the HD remaster, which of course... You know, what? I'll make a separate video about my video games, don't worry. Um, but I've got some of the Uncharted stuff. Dead Space 2. You guys have been pushing me to buy a copy of Dead Space 2 and play this game for ages after we did Dead Space 1. Because apparently you really love me shitting my pants wildly on uh, camera. Um, Val What's this? What is this? Oh, Valkyria Chronicles. Nino Kuni. What? I wish... I oh, fuck. I genuinely wish I had the time to play those. Like, I really want to, after doing this, stick one of those discs in and just dive into a video game. Um, but after doing this, I actually have to just render the video and then force myself to go to sleep. Ah, oh, man. So, wait, what was the question? Yeah, Yoshimitsu. 
<laughs> Gender bent Yoshimitsu, I'll consider it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I finally got back on track. Um, Huni Kenkt. Oh, yeah. Figure design and invention by Michael Hampton. You've linked to the um, Amazon page with a book on it. Nice one. Thank you very much. And Tyrone Thomas says, misunderstood question. My first anime is Lucky Star. I would choose anime over manga. And the biggest thing wrong about fairy tale is plot armor. Uh, no matter what situation the characters are in, you know for sure nothing bad will happen permanently. Oh, right. Plot armor, as in like the main protagonists are protected from dying because there's no sense of risk. Yeah, I kind of know what you mean. One Piece is also is almost similar. One Piece plays on emotion. Fucking right. One Piece definitely knows how to play on emotion. And that's why it's one of the greatest things, because that will take you from laughs to like feeling genuine feels and stuff like that. And character building like One Piece. I don't know if it's still the number one uh, shonen manga. Um. I'm sure, I'm not even going to check, but I can tell you right now, it's probably most definitely in the top three, if not the top two. And it's there for a reason. Despite running for so long, it knows how to have you emotionally invested in the characters. That is what really locks you in. And you can have really dry art. You remember Bleach? Like, what happened to Bleach, man? Like, you, you just stopped fucking caring about any of them. They all just got really flat. But yeah, One Piece is where it's at. Haven't read any of that all year. Um, so I've got some catching up to do. Uh, where was I last? <laughs> where was I last? Oh, I keep just thinking about how this particular DWM is just like a a tired ramble ramble. Thank you again if you're still watching. I'm not going to thank you anymore. You know the vibe, you hardcore. I bloody love you. Um, but yeah, where was I up to in One Piece? Oh, fuck. What was... Oh, shit. The, the fucking wedding. Fuck. Okay, so I'll, I won't get too descriptive because spoiler alert. But they need to stop the wedding, and they're going to do an assassination attempt. Oh, fuck, I wonder how that goes. Oh, fuck. So this is a thing, right? There's so much fucking awesome stuff. I want to fucking make some Let's Play video game videos, or do, like, a, a video game live stream. My internet connection won't allow such magic. Um, Or just sit down and read One Piece all night and stuff like that. But now I've got to go to work because I need to pay for the house rent and stuff like that and pay my bills and the council tax. Just want to do the cool stuff. Oh, to be rich. Come support me on Patreon. <laughs> and I'll do whatever I want. If I hit, like, um, a Patreon target of, like, I don't know, $2K a month, I will straight up quit my job and just do only awesome shit for the rest of my life. That'd be fucking mental. Ah, oh, to dream. Justin Green says, Oh, my God, French, Japanese, Spanish, that last language I didn't know the name of. How many languages can you speak? That's freaking awesome. Oh, thank you very much. Um, Yeah, hopefully I've already answered that question when somebody asked before, because being able to talk to other people is awesome. I strongly recommend it. And Danny Campbell says, hey, Mikey. Hello, Danny. First of all, let me say I just recently subscribed because I watched and seen how helpful you were to me in getting me to improve my progress drawing better. I thank you. You're welcome. I thank you very much for subscribing. Now onto the question. It all begins with Naruto and Dragon Ball, even uh, Samurai Jack, as my childhood shows for drawing became a hobby uh, since the last year because of Death Note and Ghost in the Shell, which... Yeah, which the movie was horrible, correct? Thanks again, Mikey. So yeah, I think I get what you're getting at. Obviously, your drawing style has kind of developed along with the anime and television that you've been watching, which is only natural. I went for a massive Helsing phase where I could only draw characters with like long pointy noses and big wicked grins and big circular shades. We all go for it. Uh, so do 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 do. Godly Blow Art says a moment when your parents walk in as you watch High School D times D. <gasps> Embarrassed face. And seven replies. Let's have a quick look at this comment chain. I know the feeling, bro, says the energetic turtle. Uh, and Lon Adams is like, what? And yeah, so basically, yeah, I know that one. There's lots of, well, it's not like you don't see any nips or anything, but there's some very busty characters there and schoolgirls killing them zombies. Like you've got to when there's a zombie infestation. Uh, Casey Ellis says, what's up, you beautiful bastard? Hello there. <laughs> oh my God, Casey Ellis, you reminded me of, uh, is it Philip DeFranco? Philip DeTanco. What's up, you beautiful bastards? Two things. One, fuck Ghost in a Shell live action. That was not okay. That was not okay. It's all in cap locks, caps lock. I started working on another project on top of a hentai project with my friend, Save Me, and I'm taking a brand new sketchbook and drawing all of their Kingdom Hearts logos over cover arts, finishing the book with a tattoo from the game that you want. Also, I should be paying attention to my lecture, but this is better and keeping me awake. Hashtag hardcore crew. Can you draw a steampunk character, please? Awesome. Excellent stuff. I hope that all works out very well. Can I draw a steampunk character? I'm sure we can fit one in further down the line. I don't... I don't know how to put it. So there's the anime Steam Boy. That's steampunk. Um, Fallout 4 is steampunk, I guess? Maybe? 
It's like kind of retro punk. I don't know if that's a thing. 50s punk. Um, but I'm not, I'm not, I've got nothing against it, but I haven't like dived into much steampunk particular anime and stuff or video games. So I don't have like a really deep knowledge of steampunk culture, oddly. Obviously, I love steampunk Star Wars and all that sort of shit. I love seeing that steampunk Batman as well. Um, so yeah, I'll have to kind of have a look in. What else? I feel like I'm missing something that I have watched as an anime but watched steampunk, but it's just not coming to me. Something about them racing planes which didn't have any wings? Something like that? Hmm. Who knows? Um, Kim Brent, back in the day I watched Transformers and Thundercats. Thunder, Thundercats! Sight beyond sight. Ho! Another push, Heyman, and now my Western tastes are Adventure Time, Gravity Falls, and definitely Samurai Jack. And looking forward to the new spin off animated series of Star Wars Forces Destiny, focusing on the female characters as they're going to be voiced by the actresses. Um, hmm. Am I excited about any cartoon Star Wars spin offs, really? Uh. I never got into, as one exception by the way, I'm going to get to it, I never got into the Star Wars animated stuff, especially when episodes 1 through 3 were coming out. Um, all of the CG animated stuff wasn't for me, I didn't care about the characters, I couldn't buy into it, except the, is it just called Clone Wars, the animated series? Something like that, have a look for it. It's the 2D animation Star Wars stuff by like the same people with Cartoon Network, I think, who made Samurai Jack. has that very Samurai Jack vibe to it. And that shit was the bomb. I am not fucking kidding you. Like, some of the um, bounty hunters and bad guys and the fights for Obi-Wan and Anakin get up to and that are really, really good. And it has this really great choreographed fight that shows Anakin, like, starting to embrace the dark side and his combat techniques. It's got Obi-Wan fighting uh, his, like, Krug or crew or something, like this unkillable um, mutant bounty hunter thing. And it's got just so many it's got mace window mace window fights a load of drones and he just like pulls off jedi's like power techniques and trick shots it's so fucking good i i strongly recommend you look at that every episode was like i don't know like five ten minutes long they were super short so it's easy chewing viewing if you can get your hands on it definitely recommend that i'm probably not interested in any other star wars spin-offs other than that one thing it was the exception to the rule for me if I do bloody love star wars and bloody love the star wars movies asterisk obviously the first three um so yeah good on you let me know how that goes if you start watching it if it's definitely worth a recommend maybe i'll give it a look um what else is going on jimmy parr says i don't know if it's too late i'm not sure if voltron or thundercats are considered anime so i'll say ronin warriors and dragon ball would be my first anime show that i started watching in a foster home akira and ghost in the show would be my first anime movies that i watched in a group home but i'd have to say joe mad was a big influence to my art when he came out with battle chasers oblong with Blade of the Immortal. Sorry for the long message. You're forgiven, Jimmy Parr. Blade of the Immortal. Yeah, that's... Well, I don't know if that's a TV series as well, but the actual film was really, really good about that. So I like that. Akira Ghost in the Shell. Excellent. Well done. It's a good thing to grow up to, home or otherwise. And Maren Taha says, Hey, Mikey. Hello, Maren. Uh, you're the one who encouraged me to get into drawing. Oh, winners. Good news. I love you so much for that. Thank you very much. I guess your question was, how would you watch anime stroke manga for the rest of your life? Uh, would I? Oh, would you? Yes, that was my question. Anyway. Uh, well, I've watched anime much more than I've read manga in my life. That's why I would choose to read manga. Oh, to dive into the unknown. Very brave decision. A weaker man would just sit with what he knows and play the safeguard. Mr. Awesome Trex says, Hi, Mikey. Hello, Mr. Awesome Trex. I'm really surprised Britain didn't have a block similar to Toonami. Here in Canada, we have the anime block called Bionics. Around the same time that Toonami existed, maybe Canadian anime fans couldn't get Toonami from the US and wanted a block of their own in the Great White North. Are you saying block as in like um, a TV channel is a block or like there's a block of time on a TV that's devoted to anime? I'm assuming that's because we don't uh, we don't I guess we don't say block that much over in the UK for scheduling. Um, but yeah, I think I know what you're getting at. And no, you had to have Sky. You had to be getting the Toonami channel from the States, I think, on Sky. That's all we had back in the day. Either way, I love hearing about anime fans outside of Japan and North America, and these videos are really fun to listen to. This one's probably less fun. It's super sleepy story, Mikey, but brilliant. Uh, thank you. Anyway, so someone who loves reading and the artwork of manga, it's a hard choice, but I'd have to go with anime because the volumes are pretty expensive to collect, and there's a lot of good anime that aren't based off manga. Right, so here's another, here's another secret. I say it's like a secret. This is going to be like the end of the um, video. I'm still going to read another comment, I'm sure. This is going to be like the end of video last tip that I'll give you. It's not an easy tip, but if you bloody love reading manga and you want cheap manga, 
because over in the UK, a volume of manga is anywhere between like six to 12 quid now. It's fucking mental, especially if you're trying to buy it in London. And you're just like, how can you pay that money? Um, and in other countries, it's also very expensive. Learn Japanese, learn to read and write Japanese. That's not easy. I have forgotten way more than I know. I've forgotten like more than half of what I used to be able to read in Japanese. And it's a big shame. Although I'll probably be able to pick it back up within a year or so. Um, but do that. Go to Japan. And Japan, because anime is everywhere and manga is everywhere, there are these bookstores in Japan. It's like one hon or something like that. And they are just floors and floors of secondhand manga. Volumes and volumes and volumes. I can't fucking, because they buy and sell um, secondhand. And even if it's just come off the shelf, like somebody will read, read a volume and sell it on straight away. And it's so fucking cheap. Like, I don't know what the exchange rate is, but I was buying... Uh, entire volumes of manga from anywhere between 50p to three pounds each most of them at 50p if you're not too i mean i'm not talking about tatty at all just clearly they've been read like the moment they look like they've been slightly read um their price is just really low because everywhere so the couple times i've been to japan i just bought stacks and stacks of manga i'm gonna do another you know what loads of videos i'm gonna have to do when we come up to 100 subscribers um 100k subscribers i'll have to show you my manga collection i'll have to show you my video game collection you know we'll hang out around my house kind of thing um there's like two people listening to this at the end of the video it's cool um but yeah i just bought tons and tons put them in a box and get them shipped home because it's just books you don't pay import tax because that's a fucker that'll get you and it takes about three months to get back to the uk so you're back from your holiday and then later in a year like it all turns up um but yeah if you want physical manga in your bookshelves um, and you're really into Japanese stuff, learn to read and write Japanese, read um, manga in its original format, and you can get it for so cheap. If you get a friend in Japan or a pen friend to start shipping that shit over and you pay them, it's absolutely worth it. Although my manga collection, I don't know if I'll be able to have to take this with me when I move out. It's going to be tough. I might have to get rid of it. <gasps> I don't even want to think about that. Crazy Creator says, hey, Mikey, two things. Hello, Crazy Creator. First, I didn't mean to offend you with a hand tutorial. I just meant something easier to follow. I can't remember what you're saying. Maybe you just hated my hand tutorial. It's okay. Don't worry. No offense taken. Screwed up my right wrist as well now. Oh, man, I know how you feel. And now I need to take a break from drawing. Also, lefty takes six years to type stroke right. Yeah, hashtag hardcore crew. Yeah, going to the left is, is just a bugger. Um, healing up the right. My right isn't still perfect. It's way better than it was, though. So I'm hoping it's going to get back to 100%. Um, Cloverly Rainbow says, even though I probably would prefer watching anime, I'd probably choose manga so I could keep up more to date on the story, you know? Yes, I do know indeed. Um, you want that freshest hit, although I'm actually only reading one manga right now. I love my ass off, and I don't even watch anime much at all. Fair dues. What my? You tell me, what, tell me you're reading one manga, you don't even tell me what it is. What is it, bro? Fucking share that shit. Uh, Juan says, I went to Tokyo and Kyoto last December. I'm very jealous. I spent almost two days in Akihabara. Yes, for rest of the time I spent visiting temples, castles, and just walking the streets. That's pretty much exactly how I do it as well. Um, and you can get a few headaches from the overpopulated, very colourful graphics in very tiny spaces. True. And the ending song from Occult Time was everywhere, even in non-anime shops. I don't know it, so thankfully I don't have it stuck in my head. Uh, there's quite a lot of Berserk-related anime things, for CGI one. Uh, and also bought some manga from Berserk, Gantz, Stack on Titan, FMA, and others dude that sounds like such an awesome holiday and yes the artist from attack on titan has a lot of problems in keeping his proportions right a lot he does indeed not hating just noticing um oh i went to a really cool store with a lot of merchants upload it's a long comment i went to a really store core with a lot of merch really cool store with a lot of merchant got it for merchandising from popular anime and it was cool until i went into that shop's basement when there was a lot of hentai and it was really shocking yeah that's how it is but i can not shy about it i estimate most of the characters are not even 10 years old yikes that is so this is like I'm not going to go on a fucking banner razor thing. Obviously, if you're a pedophile, like, you fucking stay away from my friend's children and all that sort of shit. Like, just fucking get out. But, um, yeah, over there, that hentai for, like, really young characters, they just, nobody talks about it, but they print a lot of it. And that's, again, a really concerning sign. Um, God knows. I, like, I'm not going to get into a thing. I'd rather, I'd rather a pedophile was looking at a cartoon of a girl than abusing a real child. I'd prefer neither <laughs> if I could pick. Um, it's really weird. It's a different culture, absolutely. Um, anyway, um, I know many characters are young teenagers, and I don't like to be intolerant if it's just drawings of fictional characters and you're not hurting anyone, but seeing all of that can really test your patience. 
You are correct, sir. It can test your patience. You kind of just think, fucking hell, what's wrong with your society? And like, I love Japanese stuff. I'm so, so into it, but I'm not fucking blind. I'm not like a weirbo and like, there's some messed up shit. Well, there's messed up shit with every culture. Let's kind of get around it. But um, their messed up shit happens to be some of our most like culturally in a Western culture. Some of the things like people tend to be quite unified on it is not being into kids and like pedophiles not being popular and over there it's just like ah oh, let's just not talk about it and let's just print this and make her younger um and right oh my god we're so running out of time oh i can't end it on a pedophile talking that's like a really serious uh, exit let's have a look at agua tamala oh god i can't even say it let's look at your comment my first love of anime was amazing to if you think you're old step aside kid i'm 43 Ah, oh, god damn it i often think i'm like the oldest guy in the drawer of mikey chats that we have some of you guys are outdoing me. I have to show you, like, you know, respect because you rank out authority. But then I love Evangelion. Ergo Proxy is just beautiful. Ergo Proxy? I'll tell you a fucking thing. I watched the Ergo Proxy anime. Uh, like, I downloaded it all years ago, back when I was downloading Naughty and sh should be buying these things and supporting artists. So, you know how it goes. But I, like, I watched... I, I thought I had every episode and I somehow managed to, like, fail the download in the last episode. It's a corrupt file. And I sat through and I watched it, and it was so, like, beautiful. It wasn't beautiful enough for me. It was so philosophical and long and dull. Maybe I wasn't in the right mindset. Maybe I should give it another chance, you tell me. But, like, I sat through it, like, just episode after episode, and I was like, I don't even know what the statues want anymore. I don't know what she wants. Everybody leaves the place. They go back to the place. Robots are there. Sometimes robots aren't there. And when I realized that the last episode was corrupt, I just realised that I didn't even care enough to re-download it. I was just like, oh, well, that's done then. Fuck it. I'll just move on with my life. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe I didn't have my head in the right place. But I just, I sat through Ergo Proxy. I remember fuck all of it. I remember it being very clever, um, but not, didn't, just didn't grab my attention. Like, none of the characters had any, like, pizzazz or charisma. I just couldn't get on board. Anyway, I'm like, I've got a very old memory. It might be much better than that. So I do apologize. Let me know. Death Parade was really touched your old heart. And nowadays, um, you say that you're into drifters, drarara, and waiting for Attack on Titan season two to start. Talking about Western comics, DC, Batman and Flash are awesome. Batman's so fucking good. Um, had so many story arcs of Batman. It's just like incredible what it investigates. Along with Spawn, I used to love drawing Spawn. I didn't really enjoy Spawn, especially the movie. However, European comics are more of your thing, like uh, Philippe Jabinet, for instance. Ooh, look at you getting all sassy with your Philippe. Let's control C. I wonder if I know any of his work, because it doesn't ring a bell. Oh, more modern stuff. Cool. Oh, well, thank you very much for that suggestion, sir. That's staying on my... Um, things that you suggest tab open. Let's give that a quick favorite. I'll investigate that later. So, everybody, you lovely people, guys and girls, I have, like, with the whole comments tab open, made my way to the bottom. I have skipped, oh God, like half or more than half. And I'm so sorry in order to just kind of, you know, get through the episode. Um, I do have a good read through every comment on here, and I am so thankful for you guys following along as ever as obvious. Um, if any of you guys are still watching along and you're interested in the holiday I've been up to, obviously I've got that blog channel now, Mikey Whitehead. There we go. I nearly forgot. Um, so I'll be kind of putting that into a video there. So link in the description below or maybe like at the end of this video or something. Don't forget to look out there if you'd ever like. Hopefully this weekend another tutorial, um, my art, your design, I don't think I'm going to get to fit one in this Friday, so hopefully we'll push up that to the next one, and thank you so much. If there's something you've got to say, or something you've said and I've not had a chance to read it, stick it in the comments again, say hello, ask me about anything, it doesn't just have to be art or manga based, that's just a general theme of the channel, and I hope you guys have a lovely week. Alright everybody, peace out, you're the best, bye bye. Oh, 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 oh,